watch for the signs. My name is Jared. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you end up liking it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share it with anyone that finds this stuff interesting. So you may remember three days ago, I did a video as we were waiting for this big, massive storm to hit Alaska. The name of that video was largest storm in a decade headed towards Alaska. Well, uh, we are now three days after I made that video and uh, looks like it was more than just a largest storm in a decade. Uh, let me show you what happened. <clears throat> okay, so this is a Associated Press article, okay? And it says, floodwaters receding after storm batters Western Alaska. Here's a picture, you see a house that's on a road or a freeway or something, it's going underneath a bridge. Uh, flood waters were receding in parts of western Alaska, battered by the worst storm in half a century. Okay, so uh, not just 10 years or 20 years or 30, 50 years. <clears throat> Leaving behind debris flung by powerful Bering Sea waves into beaches and seaside communities. Uh, it was a massive storm system big enough to cover the mainland U.S. from the Pacific Ocean to Nebraska and from Canada down to Texas. It influenced weather systems as far away as California, uh, where a rare late summer storm dropped rain on the northern part of the state, offering a measure of relief to wildfire crews, but also complicating fire suppression efforts because of mud and loosened earth. And uh, I'll check on uh, fire in just a little while, not in this video, but, but later. Uh, highest water since 1974, the storm caused gnomes highest water level since 1974, 11.1 feet above the normal tide, and other communities may have surpassed levels seen 48 years ago. Uh, this did not turn out, <coughs> excuse me, this was not good what happened. Um, of course it wasn't going to be good, but it, it was really not good. And um, we're going to get into all the, the fallout of what happened. And I'm, I'm kind of shocked at a lot of these things actually. Um, so let's just move on. There's some more details here from the New York New York Times. Western Alaska lashed by strongest storm in years. Let's see, a city worker in Nome, Alaska helped to shore up the mini convention center to prepare for possible flooding. Okay. Um, forecasters warned that the storm could cause flooding to homes, businesses, and critical infrastructure. The Weather Service said on Twitter that water levels of more than 10 feet recorded at Nome exceeded the the record those recorded in 2011 and 2004. So this is like a kind of like a prior article, but uh, these dates are important because from what we read last time, people would always compare storms to the one that happened in 2011. And uh, the one in 2011, uh, it, it was the uh, the 2011 Bering Sea Superstorm. Okay. So that's that's kind of like been the what they've they've always uh, compared it to. Anyway, the highest water in the modern era was about 12 feet, recorded in 1974. It said, adding, "quote Significant impacts are occurring in Nome and many other communities at this time." As of Saturday morning, water levels were seven to nine feet above normal in Nome, where the population is less than 10,000. Said the National. Ocean Service, a division of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Quote, this continues to be a dangerous storm as it is producing water levels uh, above higher levels above higher than any seen over the last at least 50 years. Forecasters at the Weather Service in Fairbanks, Alaska wrote early on Saturday morning, waves north of the Aleutian Islands were reported at or above 35 feet for 12 hours straight on Friday and peaked at more than 50 feet, forecasters said. Okay, so what else? What else is going on here? Okay, this is as storm battered, Western Alaska takes stock of damage and begins cleanup. Officials pledge help. Uh, up and down Nome's Alaska, up and down, sorry, Nome, up and down Alaska bearing the sea coast, the scope of disruption, destruction left by a historic storm is becoming clear. The remnants of a Pacific typhoon pummeled roughly a thousand miles uh, of western Alaska coastline over the weekend, damaging infrastructure and homes. 
The storm shredded seawalls, uh, comprised drinking water systems, ripped homes from their foundation, deluged streets in Nome with seawater, and left houses filled with silt. No casualties have been reported in the storm or its aftermath, which I, I feel like that's a miracle because there's been so much destruction. Uh, there's flooding. Uh, we're going to talk about the cabins uh, that, that people use there to, to assist them in like getting food. Um, it says the state identified five communities, Hooper Bay, Scammon Bay, Golovin, New Talk, and Nome, as being greatly impacted by a combination of high water, uh, flooding, erosion, and electrical issues. Nome, where one vacant home being used for storage floated down a river until it was caught by a bridge, was among the many reported uh, road damage after recorded tidal surges 11.1 feet above normal. Here's some more of the damage. <clears throat> Two cruise ships scheduled to sail out, sail out of Nome rode out the storm further north, sheltered in Port Clarence. By Monday, passengers were flying into Nome and shuttled from the airport in school buses before heading out to sea. All right. Yeah, it's just total just devastation. It's like what you see when you see just any flooding or a tsunami, you know, houses being washed away. Um, oh, gosh. The bottom floor of Willow Olson's home filled with sand during the recent storm. Golovin is digging out of the storm September 19th, 2022. That is mighty frustrating I would be I would be so upset if that was my house right now I, I would I would seriously be and then on top <coughs> on top of that who knows what other damage there may have been to the house uh, water damage flood damage things like that and just who knows about the rest of their property or other things that they have um, okay let's move on to the next one yeah house bridge, but that's the one that it's talking about. Uh, Fairbanks, Alaska, in the village of Golovin, 50 miles east of Nome, initial reports indicate that up to a dozen of the 48 houses uh, there had been there had been inundated with water. 48 houses. Um, it, says, it says up to a dozen of the 48 houses. Okay. In the city of Kotzebue, in the state's northwest Arctic borough, a region where the yearly low temperature can reach 52 degrees below zero, uh, residents reported their flooded airport runway was also covered in debris. And that's a problem because I don't know how much you know about Alaska. Um, I feel like this is maybe common knowledge, but maybe not for some. Uh, Alaska is very remote. Okay, it is a very, let's pull up the, let's do, um, let's do Zoom Earth just so we can kind of see what's going on right now. Looks like this right here would be the remnants of the storm. Here's Western Alaska. Um, Alaska, no, you know what? I need to look at a globe. Let's do Alaska. Just pull it up on Google Maps just to get a better idea of the size. Uh, everyone knows Alaska, land-wise, is the largest state, like by far. It is huge, and um, it's not very populated. Uh, what's the population of Alaska? Let's see. Uh, U.S. states by population. Let's go to the Wikipedia article. Go down to this, and then uh, it's already sorted by July 1st, 2021 estimate right here alaska it's it's at the number 49 spot um this is of 56 rows so this is also including um territories and stuff like that alaska doesn't even have a million people living up there let me let me zoom in in case you can't see it alaska only has 732,000. Um, as their population. That is really small. Uh, they're just a little bit bigger than Washington, D.C., <laughs> which, 
which is kind of stunning. Um, okay, so you look at this, and it seems to me that most of the population lives down here. Like here's Anchorage, and then Juno is somewhere. I might have to look it up. I thought I thought I knew. I thought Juno. Oh, there it is. Juno's right here. Okay. So I think most of the population is basically over here. Nome, let's see if we can find that. There's Hooper Bay. They were talking about Hooper Bay, Scammon Bay. Um, let's see if we can find Nome. Nome, Alaska. Where are you? So, you know, you think about the state that you live in, unless you live in Alaska, and uh, these are just like huge distances uh, to travel, like if you need help. So in Alaska, a lot of them uh, depend on airplanes, right? Just uh, small charter flights to get around. Um, I don't think Alaska is really known for its highway network. I mean, there are highways, but this is kind of not a good place to find yourself in trouble because help may take a long time to find you, right? And so these airports are uh, kind of critical. Yeah, they're kind of critical for supplies, getting around, things like that. Because like, look at Nome. Nome only has, it looks like, like this one road right here that goes to town and then and then you can take that road and go a really long distance up to teller which <laughs> it doesn't look like there's a whole lot going on in teller uh from what i can tell teller uh looks like it has like three main roads and that's about it let's see what okay gnome to teller alaska that's a that's a two and a half hour drive. It's a two and a half hour drive, and it looks like that's the maybe the closest town. Well, there's White Mountain over here. Sorry, I, I just this is to help us just understand uh, the situation. Imagine that you were living in some crazy place like this, um, and I'm not I'm not exactly sure why people live here, but it's okay. Um, I don't have to. I'm sure that there's there's good reasons for different people to live there. Okay, Gnome to White Mountain. Oh, duh. I was doing Teller because there's a road there. There is you can't get to White Mountain uh, by road. Here's here's White Mountain. Here's Gnome. No road. It looks like the only place that you can go. Look, can you get to uh, Mary's Igloo? What is Mary's Igloo? It may literally be just an igloo. Um, is there a three <laughs> is there a three sixty view? No. Um, okay, there's not a whole lot going on at Mary's igloo. So anyway, very remote. You need airplanes to get around. Okay, so with that in mind, let's continue. I think we uh, <coughs> let's see in the city of. Kotzebu in the state's northwest Arctic borough, a region. Okay, yeah. They, they, so they were talking about how their airport runway was also covered with with debris and flooded. Okay, for many, the storm could not have come at a worse time. Mid September is a prime hunting season, and most rural residents, which is probably the majority of the state, uh, rely on hunting to stock their freezers with moose and caribou. For the winter. Reports of damage in upturned fuel tanks were also concerning because those tanks hold the diesel fuel that powers local generators and heat homes. The tanks also hold the gasoline that fuels vehicles used in hunting for, sub for subsistence, four-wheelers, boats, and snowmobiles. In some cases, cabins people use during the fishing season, as well as drying racks and smokehouses, have been destroyed. And that was like, that's what I was talking about with uh, the cabins. There's going to be another thing that kind of goes more 
in detail about that. And then here, let's see, Melanie Bonke, president of Kawarik, a gnome based regional consortium that serves 20 federally or recognized tribes in Alaska, drew a comparison for non Alaskans. Okay, so that's most of us. Uh, imagine if New York's airport was completely wiped out and there were no other way in or out, she said. Then she added, uh, imagine if you no longer had a way to get to the grocery store. Uh, Ms. Banke, or Banke, I'm not sure, on Sunday called on Governor Mike Dunleavy to move beyond a state disaster declaration, which he issued on Saturday. She said a federal disaster declaration from the Biden administration would release the level of funds uh, that may be required for reconstruction. So um, hopefully you're getting the sense that this, this was really, really bad. Um, okay, some of them just disappeared. Essential pieces of life in Nome were lost in the storm. Nome, the storm that slammed western Alaska over the over the weekend has reorganized or yeah, reorganized the land. There was no loss of life, thank goodness, but lands but the landscape of Nome is physically altered for the foreseeable future. With raw materials scattered widely, the coastline reconfigured, the camps and shoreside compounds anchoring generations of subsistence either flattened or gone. All up and down the Nome Council Road, heading east out of town. Let's see. All up and down the Nome Council Road, heading east out of town. Cabins used for fishing, foraging, and seasonal family life are in ruin. Quote unquote, some of them just disappeared, said Brian Hammond, the incident commander for Nome's Emergency Operations Center. Uh, let's take a look at Nome again. I wonder if there's like any, there's probably no 360 over here it's just a small town i mean here's a road that goes east of town uh or maybe it's talking about is there a road here yeah so i'm just following this road oh and it crashed of course let me just see if i can refresh it yeah, okay, so there's there's this other road that hugs the the coastline, it looks like. So let's go back here to Nome. Let's see if there's any 360 views. There is. Okay, so let's check east of town right here. <sighs> yeah. Uh, I don't think I'd really want, I'd really want to live here. Uh, Greg Krushek Avenue. Okay, let's get out of this. Let's just take a look just really quick. Let's just see what the town actually looks like. Let's kind of go uh, like right here. Oh, there's a bunch of people outside. The Iditarod uh, sled dog race. Cool. I, I guess, you know, I guess that's the kind of thing that you do when you, <laughs> when you live in Alaska. That's uh, going to be one of the main events. Oh, look, Chicago, Miami, London. <laughs> Miami is uh, <clears throat> like the exact opposite of where you're at right now. North Pole, Siberia. Okay, all right, enough of that. Um, many car and truck owners are gradually discovering their vehicles were effectively totaled by partial submersion in the salty, silty floodwaters. Uh, but the worst damage, that's, it just like keeps getting worse. But the worst damage is out of town with, with an as yet uncounted number of subs, 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 subsistence cabins in shambles. To those fam unfamiliar with Western Alaska, the word cabin might conjure a hut of neatly notched logs nestled in the woods or a euphemism for a lavish weekend home overlooking Nancy Lake. Uh, these are not the... <laughs> What? It's not like a nice cabin? Okay, these are not those. The fish camps peppering the river mouths and shores of the southern Seward Peninsula are more, more like cozy shacks rather than electrified nor plumbed buttresses 
by meat racks, smokehouses, saunas, cutting tables, wood piles, and utilitarian brick a brack for making use of the land in seas seasonal offerings. <clears throat> so here here's one right here, <laughs> for example. Um, wait, family camps and subsistence cabins lie in ruins, shifted off their pads, floating aw floated away and buried in sand along with Nome Council Road. And then there's a like a suburban back there, completely upside down. Uh, they are essential to the region's economy. Family scale food production and processing plants, summertime child care and education centers, a uh, release valve for overcrowded homes <clears throat> and apartments in a region with a <clears throat> endemic housing shortage. Um, Golo Gergen said, already a lot of people are out beach combing for edible stuff and to see what what's left over or left of everyone's camps. Gosh, I, I cannot imagine a situation like that where basically a lot of your food you you catch yourself, you hunt or, you're, or you catch. I'm sure that they get some stuff from the grocery store as well. So they rely mostly on like planes coming to town, I, I would assume. Or Well, no, it's, it's on the coast. So maybe there's like boats that come. But um, having to like go out to the beach and look for food on the beach if there's anything to eat, uh, that is a dreary situation, I must say. Uh, the long road east of Nome r remains in states of disarray, including sections totally washed out or buried in sand. Uh, farther down, a bridge by Safety Sound was almost impassable just two miles before a new channel broke through the barrier island, obliterating the roadway. Oh, this really sucks. Uh, family camps and subsistence, subsistence cabins lie in ruins shifted off their pads, floated away, and buried in sand along the Nome Council Road. Yep. These are all, they're, I mean, they're, some of these are just done for. Well, I think that's going to be it for this one. Um, I don't think that there was anything else really big to report. I, I put this on my disaster tracker under the hasn't happened since tab and i'm open to different names for this tab but that, that's just like the best thing that i can think of so it, that's different from the unprecedented tab i'm trying to just keep track of like you know just events that happen that are unprecedented or you know this hasn't happened in twenty thousand years in this case uh this one uh i have it as this hasn't happened in 50 years uh this storm <clears throat> unless there's more details that emerge uh, that's really all I can do as far as like putting it on the tracker. Thankfully, no fatalities, and it doesn't seem like there's been any injuries. Um, if anything else comes up, I will let you guys know. In the meantime, please pray for these people because they are in a pretty dire situation right now. All right, so uh, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.